that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful day of dressing. Since you do have um, a lot of knowledge about managing deer, I wanted to ask you, what do you, what did you think about like creating bedding areas with hinge cutting? I've watched some videos on that recently. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, so I need to. That's another thing I've, I've, I've actually got on my list to do on it. Um, hinge cutting. It's an older technique that just kind of I don't even know where it originated from, but it's got its benefits. But more so now, I try to steer away from it um there's just a lot of maintenance that goes into it so if you're wanting to go into place and and really manage it and kind of keep hands off which is normally what you want to do especially if you're trying to get bucks in there and and have their have them be comfortable and that's what you're looking for um like i would say the benefits of hinge cutting is you're going to get quick cover so if you go in there and you proper properly hinge cut you're bringing that canopy down and it's going to instantly, you're creating that cover right there. It's gonna create cover there and it's bringing food instantly to the deer. Now the food's gonna be ripped apart like pretty dang quick. Um, but the one thing that you always gotta, you've always gotta factor in is that that root base is still 100% alive um, and it's still feeding that tree. And when it's doing that, it's still competing 100% with everything that's trying to grow around it. So that root base is still alive, your grasses, your forbs, your new saplings, whatever it may be that could be benefiting from you cutting down that tree really aren't because they're still competing with that, the moisture that they're trying to take out of the soil and the nutrients that they're trying to take out of the soil. And then if you go in there and you don't properly hinge cut and you actually kill, top, kill that tree and you're hinge cutting say at waist level, within two years now, if that stump like regenerates growth right there from where it was cut, in two or three years, now that food is already above and out of the reach of the deer, and you're going to have to come back in there, and you're going to have to rehinge cut. Um, I would tell you if there was any places that I was going to use hinge cutting, it's if I knew that I could get back in there, and the next year I can do some maintenance on it, or within the next year or two I can do some maintenance on it, and either come in and hack spray it, or cut it and spray it, um, or something there, or uh, like like on my property when I did it, because I've got some videos doing it as well, but I've learned a lot. So um, on those videos is I did it right down like my driveway because it was so open when you drove down my driveway. Where you could see all the way down through the woods and I knew that I just didn't hold the deer on the driveway. And when you have small property, you literally want to utilize every single square inch of your property and you want a deer not to be pressured. So I was like, you know what? I want to be able to see deer right next to my driveway. Now, every single day, you can see deer right next to my driveway because they feel like they're covered up because they think you can't see them, but 10 yards off the road, you can really see them, but they have enough cover that they think that they're good. But I went in there and I actually um, hinge cut that, threw it over. That way I get instant cover down by the driveway. But since then, I've had to go back in, do maintenance. Yeah, I either cut it and sprayed it or something. So there's benefits. I would encourage anybody that's going, that's thinking of doing that to rather go in and just go ahead and cut that tree completely down and um, then spray it. So you want to spray it with like a tordon, which is a really strong, strong herbicide and it will kill that. And then you have all that nutrients that's just sitting there and moisture that's sitting there. So now you're going to get your grasses and your forbs and your new saplings to grow up. And by going in there and cutting that tree down, now you're opening up the canopy and you're getting all that sunlight to come through and it's going to hit that soil. And it's going to be pretty tremendous on the growth there. And you, I can promise you just by personal experience, how many deer are in there all the time. So um, that's what I encourage you to do between the two. I don't know what your stance is on it, but that's, it's kind of what I've learned from it and what I encourage people to do. Yeah, I've just I've just been watching some videos here recently and and um I'm just you know wondered what your take on it was. You know, I thought about trying it in some some areas that I, you know, that I hunt, but I've never done it before, so I just wondered what your opinion about it was. I I will let me say this on it. I will say this. If you're going in, I would probably say in a, in a mature timber stand, you've got big white oaks, red oaks, hickories that are, you know, 
40, 50, 60 feet tall, whatever they are, the full canopy in there. And if you're going to go in there <clears throat> and not cut them down and really allow the amount of sunlight needs to come I mean, like not cut them down, but thin them out at least. Um, and you're just going to go in and you're like, man, I've got elms and dogwoods and uh, whatever else in there that you want to hinge cut that are the smaller trees. That could probably be beneficial to you because you are going to bring that food down to that level because by cutting those trees down, you aren't creating enough sunlight that's going to make much of a difference for to promote a lot of growth from the soil there and so that's i now try to tell people that you've really got to manage the woods like that's a free food plot for you if you go in there and do the correct timber stand really reduce your timber stand and your, your canopy you know get it down to 50 percent or even 40 percent you're going to have a ton of light come through there and just the sheer light coming through is going to do so much for your property property it's it's incredible what it does to the woods it really like wakes it up and it comes to life 